All right, guys, we are going to start chapter four, and chapter four is a little bit different. We're going to start graphing. I honestly don't know how much experience you have with graphing, so we're going to start with the basics. This is called the coordinate plane, and on the coordinate plane, you plot points, which we have X and Y coordinates. This is considered the X axis from side to side, so anything that's like the X coordinate, meaning the X part of your point, is going to go from either to the left or to the right. And you determine that based on whether your X coordinate is negative or positive, because you have your positive X's over here, negative X's this direction. This point at the middle is zero, zero. That's called the origin. It's where you start or originate. And so the origin has a zero, zero, I mean, you don't move at all. You start and stay in the middle. Then you're going to have a Y coordinate and your Y coordinate is going to be telling you how far up or down to go because this is the Y axis. Positive is up, negative is down. So your Y coordinate will either go up or down depending on whether it's positive or negative. And so your coordinates will be um, listed like this, X and Y. Keeping in mind that they go in alphabetical order, so if that helps you remember, and then also keeping in mind that both of them could be either a positive or a negative. And so you have to look at what you have to decide. So for example, if I had a positive X coordinate and a negative Y, I would look back here and say, okay, a positive X is gonna to go to the right, a negative Y is going to go down. So I would know that I'm gonna to go to the right, however many X values, and then I'm going to go down whatever my Y value is. And keeping in mind that this is where you always start right here. This is gonna be your start point. And so you always start here. You start in the middle. And then this is broken into four equal parts, and those are called quadrants because quad is four. So there are four quadrants that the axes split this up into. This top one in the right is called the first, and then it just goes counterclockwise, second, third quadrant, and fourth quadrant. And we always use Roman numerals to identify the quadrants. I have no idea why. So kind of keeping in mind how to get there, if you are trying to get into this first quadrant, you'll need a positive X because you'll have to go over to the right and you'll need a positive Y because you'll be going up to get into that quadrant. To get into quadrant two, you'll need to go negative X and then up, so positive Y. To land in quadrant three, you'll be going to the left, so negative X and then down, negative Y. To get into quadrant four, you would go to the right, so a positive X, and then down, negative Y. And you don't need to memorize all that, it's just kind of knowing which direction positive and negative send you in, and then you'll be good to go. So, okay, let's look at some of these examples in the on the notes sheet. Um, so here, if you look, it's talking about point A, which is right here. It says point A is blank unit, so it's counting from the origin. And you always go to the left and right first, so you would go over two, and in this case, it's to the right. So point A is two units to the right of the origin, and then up two, so it's two units up. Keeping in mind that X is left to right, that's gonna be a two, and then the Y is up and down, so that's a positive two. So the coordinates are two, two. So let's take a look with point B. Point B is located right here. So starting from the origin, I go left and right first. I have to go to the left, one, two, three, four. So point B is four units to the left of the origin, and then I need to go up two, and two units up. So thinking about four to the left, my X coordinate will be a negative four, and then two up means my Y coordinate will be a two. When I write them, I write them in alphabetical order, X coordinate, and then Y coordinate. So take a minute and see if you are able to go ahead and find point C and then point D and then lastly the coordinates for point E. Then come back and check and see if we got the same thing. So to get to point C, I had to go two to the left, so negative two, and then down one, two, three, so negative three. To get to point 
D, I go one, two, three, four to the right. So that's gonna be positive and then down one, two, three. And then my last one, point E, starting at the origin, I go one to the right. So that's positive down one, two, three, four. So those are my coordinates for those points. So this is gonna go the opposite direction. So this is asking us to plot the points. So without going through all of this maybe, if I look at point A and I say, okay, point A is zero, three. So zero is an X, means you don't go to the right or left, you just don't move. And then this is positive, so that's going to be up. So from the origin, I go up one, two, three, that's gonna be point A. When I go to plot point B, one, negative two, one is going to be positive, so it's moving to the right. Two is negative, so it's going to move down. So from the origin, right here, I go two to the right, excuse me, one to the right, and then down two. There's point B. Point C is negative three, negative four. So think about the X being negative. I'm gonna to go to the left three, down four from the origin. So from here to the left, one, two, three, down one, two, three, four, that is my point C. Awesome, try these next two on your own and see how they go. Then turn the video back on and see where you landed. Okay, this is gonna go to the left, this is gonna go down. So one, two, three, four to the left, one, two, three, four down, point A. These are kind of tricky and they shouldn't be, but they're always confusing. This is gonna to go to the right, and then this just means that there's no movement. You don't go up or down at all. So you're gonna go two to the right and then just stay there. So that's point B located right on the x-axis. So what we're really gonna to head towards is plotting whole functions or equations. And to do that, we need more than one point. Um, so for example, here my equation or function is gonna be y equals x plus one. The domain means that I'm going to have my x values. So the domain of negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, those are going to be the numbers that I'm plugging in. Those are going to be my x values. So what I usually do is make a table. But my table, I usually go, ooh, geez, forgot to change back to the pen. My table, I usually do like this, and I'm hoping this seems familiar to you. So they're asking me to plug in these numbers. I'm just getting those from right here. That is called my domain. So that's just a fancy term for the x's. Then this is gonna be the y is what I get out. So here in this chart right here, they're plugging the numbers in and they're saying if you put in a negative two for this x, negative two plus one will be negative one. If you put in a negative one, negative one plus one will be zero. If you put in a zero for that x, zero plus one will be one. When you plug in a one, one plus one will be two. And when you plug in a two, two plus one will be three. These numbers, the fancy term for my y's, are range. And again, I always tell my students to think about alphabetical order. X comes before y, D comes before R. So that helps you kind of keep in mind that the x is going to be the domain and that your y's are considered range values. Fancy language that you'll use more as you get into higher level math. Okay, so now we're gonna list these numbers as ordered pairs, which just means points that you would put onto a graph. So negative two, negative one, negative one goes with zero, zero goes with one, input a one, get out a two, input a two, get out a three. And now we can go ahead and graph the function, which means plotting the points. So the first one right here is gonna be two to the left and one down. The second point is one to the left and not up and down at all. The third point, I don't go to the right or left because that's a zero, but I go up one. To the next point, I go to the right one, up two, and you can obviously see the pattern, and then the next one goes to the right two, and then up three, always starting at the origin. So if I connected these, they would make a line. It's not telling me to, but I'm plotting the points that I have. 
Identify the range. Don't let that make you panic. Identify the range is simply saying, what are the Y values? What did you get out? So that would be negative one. I'm simply copying those from here. Negative one, zero, one, two, and three. Those are my Y values. Okay, so last time, this is asking us to do the same thing. It says with the domain, right here, it says with a domain of these values. So that means we're gonna make our table and we're gonna plug in the numbers they gave us, negative four, negative two, zero, two, and four. And this looks kind of scary because there's a fraction, but it won't be terrible. Because for example, if I take negative one half and I plug in that negative four they're giving me, when you do that on your calculator, it'll come out, this whole part will just come out to be a two. So then two plus three is gonna give you a Y value of five. If I do the same thing with one half, negative one half of negative two, that's gonna turn into one plus three, and you can just do these on your calculator. If you plug in a zero, negative one half times zero, this whole part goes away. If I plug in a regular two, that's gonna be negative one plus, so that's gonna be a two. And then lastly, when I plug in my four, negative two plus three is gonna give me a one. And you can see the patterns in your numbers over in your chart. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and plot those points. So I'm just looking at this point. Negative four would go one, two, three, four to the left, and then up one, two, three, four, five. This point, excuse me, this point, negative two would go two to the left, up one, two, three, four. This point, doesn't go left or right, but it goes up one, two, three, and you can see now the pattern. So if something gets off on your pattern, you can see if you maybe did something wrong. Now I'm supposed to go two to the right, up two, and then four, one, two, three, four to the right, up one. Awesome, it does say up here to identify the range, so keep in mind that the range is nothing more than the list of your outcomes or Y values. So that's gonna be these guys over here. So my range is five, four, three, two, and one. Okay, so now you know everything in the universe. So check the daily plan for your homework and have a great day. Bye, guys.